Federal Executive Council approves funds for new airport and other projects. Federal Inland Revenue Service sets 10.1 trillion naira as revenue target for 2022. Auditor General of the Federation raises alarm of 4.973 trillion naira up unsubstantiated balances in 2019. Audit report. And oil prices fall in biggest losing streak since February 2020. Details of this and more on Business Express, and we are reaching you from Abuja, Nigeria's capital. I am Benny Adams, your guide. Good to have you join us on business and we start with the cheering news that the Federal Executive Council has approved the construction of new airport in Yobe State for enhanced connectivity and security architecture within the Northeast region to be called Wachakal Airport. The project is expected to go up over 6.2 billion naira. The Minister of Aviation, Hadi Sirika, announced this while briefing newsmen after the meeting of the council presided over by President Mahmoudou Buhari. The council also approved 1.7 billion naira for an AT building and the LEA scanners and others. The Federal Reserve Council, in its wisdom, had allowed this uh, to proceed, and many more are coming uh, in the pipeline. And this will generally uh, answer uh, the question as to the growth and development of civil aviation and also to show our preparedness for emergencies and uh, military uh, operation and other security agencies. The Minister of Education presented a, a request to Council for the approval, which we got, to now proceed to award contracts at the Federal University Efunwari, Delta State, for 2.7 billion to provide hostels, uh, administrative blocks, and um, uh, an e-library platform. Uh, was also approval for the NDLEA to procure and install four full body dual view scanners with X-ray management software at Lagos, Port Harcourt, Enugu, and Kano airports. The exchange rate between the Naira and the U.S. dollar closed at 411 Naira 5 Kobo to a dollar at the investors and exporters window, where Forex is traded officially on Wednesday, representing a 0.04% gain when compared to the 411 Naira 67 Kobo per dollar the previous day. How is the Naira exchanging for other currencies this morning? The Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, came out to eliminate Berudishan operators from the chain of forex traders with access to official supply at the end of last month. Three weeks down the lane, the Naira has gradually but steadily appreciated against the U.S. dollar, presently exchanging at about 411 Naira to a dollar. Meanwhile, the Naira has remained stable at the parallel market at 515 Naira to a dollar, as at Wednesday. Just two days ago, the Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, said the latest policy by the Central Bank of Nigeria is pushing the Naira towards a unified exchange rate. 
Well, the CBN policy and the exchange rate is the focus of discussion this morning. And our guest who joins us from Lagos is Rotimi Fakayejo, a market and financial analyst. Hello, Mr. Fakayejo. Good morning. Good, good morning. Okay. In the new Forex policy, the CBN is selling directly to commercial banks. The Naira has been appreciating since then. What are the pros and cons of this? Uh, well, I think uh, the first uh, pro is that uh, there is stability. And when there is stability, a lot of planning can be more effective. And uh, when the planning is more effective, then the economy gets better. Then secondly, in this scenario that we are having, there will be more availability. Because the quantum of uh, uh, Forex that was being um, disbursed through the BDs, through the change before now, is quite enormous. And I think if the only source now is through the commercial banks, then definitely we have uh, a better stable economy. And a lot of people can actually plan with that. But for the cons, uh, the CBN has to actually be in place to ensure that there is proper monitoring and surveillance of the banking activities with respect to um, uh, availability and also price manipulation if that will be uh, if that if that comes up at all. So CBN has to be on its toes to actually ensure that they monitor the banks and also they monitor the transactions with which they do with foreign exchange. Knowing fully well that the majority of foreign exchange being uh, available in Nigeria is provided through the CBN by raising of our exports of crude oil. So I think uh, all these things are, is coming timely. But the question everybody keeps asking is, can this be sustained? Because we've had situations like this in the past whereby CBN uh, suspended sale of foreign exchange to uh, grow the chance. But thereafter, a lot of pressure came on the CBN and we saw a turnaround. So the question is, if there will be sustainability of this current policy, then I believe strongly that uh, it's going to be the better for all. Okay, I haven't highlighted the positives, which are really, really more than any negative. That is, if we have any you're talking about sustainability do you then see this move getting us to that very much desired place where multiple exchange rates are removed and the naira will be at par with the dollar at some point uh, well i think at par i don't understand what you mean by that are you saying whether we are going to have a parity whereby Yes, the, the, the naira is actually appreciating. So it might be a tall dream for us, but are we moving closer to, to closing the gap? Uh, well, I think this, what we are seeing now, is a policy change. But what actually will make us to arrive at our destination is for us to have a more sustainable production of goods in our economy. Majority, I mean, most of our foreign exchange is being expended importing finished products. If it had been that it was raw materials that we spend most of the foreign exchange on, and we are, we are able to uh, do a lot of production of goods in Nigeria where we have comparative advantage, then definitely we are going to get better for it. So this is just a first phase. The next phase is how do we enhance productivity within the economy? if that also can be addressed. And that can be addressed when the right infrastructures are in place, when there is good policy with respect to export, uh, importation of finished goods, where, uh, whereby we have goods that, are can, uh, that can be produced in Nigeria, I think that policy should come up to give the local producers an advantage and put a high tariff on imported goods and uh, in that category. So I think uh, this that they have done is the first phase. And think the, what we actually be able to sustain it is to look further and do the needful, which will enhance local productivity of goods within the system. 
Okay, Mr. Ritimi, while agreeing with you that this is a journey that we have started and started well, and we hope to sustain it to get to arrive at our destination, but there is this challenge. We, we learned some sharp practices are uh, ongoing where people get uh, this forex from banks at 411 and give to Biru the change for a uh, gain. How bad is the situation? Uh, well, I think uh, one thing we need to know is that in Nigeria, whenever a new policy comes out, what Nigerians do is to look at the loopholes in that policy and take advantage of it. But that is also the reason why we have the regulators to actually do a proper oversight function whereby if they find anybody erring in that situation and you make some people scapegoats, when there is deterrent, then definitely the ease of committing crime will be brought to the lowest minimum. So I think uh, the regulator has to be uh, up in their game, and they need to, maybe if need be, they may have to engage more people in the CBN to actually do the proper surveillance and put the banks in check so that we won't have a situation whereby we are having run tripping as we have in those days, maybe about 15, 20 years back when it was so bad. So if they can actually leave this in the board and the regulators are up in their game, then definitely we, this policy will be sustained. Well, we really hope not to go back to the yesteryears as we are making remarkable progress. But before I let you go, what happens to the BDCs? Do you see them lasting long? Uh, well, I think the primary uh, function of BDC all over the world is to be available to people who want to travel and want to exchange Naira for foreign exchange. And those who are coming from abroad, they want to exchange uh, um, uh, foreign exchange for Naira. So it is the quantum of what they have by reason of that ex uh, function, which uh, role which they are playing, that they'll be able to carry out their responsibilities. So now the wheat are going to be separated from the chaff. Whereby those who are actually doing the right thing, they will be sustained, they will last, they will give up their licenses. But those who have been into the sharp practices, then definitely we are going to see we're not going to see them anymore. They're going to fizzle out as soon as possible. So for BDC, all over the world, we have them, especially in situation in countries where they do the the mostly accepted foreign exchange is not uh, the uh their local exchange i mean like a place in the u.s but in this situation we need the bdc but it is it shouldn't be as such that their direct their supply of foreign exchange will be from the central bank of nigeria Thank you so very much, Mr. Rotimi Fakejo, for sharing your thoughts with us at this particular time on the way to go on the Forex. It's my pleasure. Well, moving on. Ensuring that there is value for money spent by ministries, departments, and agencies in the interest of Nigerians remains the commitment of the Office of the Auditor General of the Federation, though with some challenges. This is the position of the Auditor General of the Federation while presenting the 2019 financial report to the Clerk of the National Assembly. Mobolaji Mori Biring has the report. Reports from the Office of the Auditor General for the Federation are tools required by the National Assembly to investigate public expenditures to ensure transparency and accountability in government financial management. This roundtable is one of such meetings of the Auditor General for the Federation to present its financial report for the year 2019 to the National Assembly. Unsubstantiated balances are matting to 4.97 trillion naira noted in the course of the audit, which was above the materiality level of 89.34 billion said for the audit among others. There are very huge challenges. The absence of the Federal Audit Service Law uh, it's, a, it's a big challenge. We are not filling the vacancies we have because of funding. Deputy Clerk to the National Assembly expressed optimism that the challenges faced by the Office of the Auditor General for the Federation are looked into by the appropriate bodies. Sister Auditor Generals across the region and the continent 
have found you worthy, you know, of appointment uh, to head your teams. The Office of the Auditor General for the Federation is a creation of the Constitution to monitor the Treasury of the Federation. From the National Assembly, Mobolaji, Mori Berry, NTA News. Going by the projections of the Federal Inland Revenue Service, Nigeria may collect double the revenue of 2021 in 2022. The Executive Chairman of FIRS, Mohamed Nami, at the MTEF FSP Interaction said they are targeting 10.1 trillion naira for collection in 2022. Lami Ali reports. Putting heads together to have a realistic budget is what the ministries, departments and agencies of government are doing with the House of Representatives Committee on Finance. At this interactive session with the committee is the chairman of the Federal Inland Revenue Service who said the outlook is positive as the half year performance on collection for 2021 is 43% of the 6.4 trillion Naira approved. Now that we have uh, PIB, uh, total sums of 4.1, 4.4 trillion, 6.2 trillion, and 5.6 trillion. And as far as non-oil taxes are concerned, we, are, we have projected that we are going to generate 5.7 trillion in the year 2022. He added that FIRS plans to introduce road tax through a legislation. You can be working towards the informal sectors or categorize the informal sector so that those masses will be in that categories and other categories can be working. The Nigerian Ports Authority took its turn with the general manager of finance, Emeka Izengu, who stood in for the acting managing director. The committee questioned several lined items on the proposed expenditure list, including the corporate social responsibility projects. The corporate social responsibility, the last one there is 3.7 Eight billion. Three point seven eight billion. Yes. And yet, the, word, the only thing you can identify is that you give light. So we will delete. We will delete that. We will take that to revenue. The NPA is projecting a revenue of three hundred and thirty-eight billion naira for 2022. The Director General of the Nigerian Lottery Regulatory Commission, Larry Baja Biamila was also engaged by the committee on the commission's projections for the 2022 to 2024 period from the National Assembly, Lami Ali. And on our surviving COVID-19 series today is a story of a young man whose line of business is rare but relevant, and he is poised for success amid challenges. <laughs> Surviving COVID-19 series is brought to you in partnership with the Central Bank of Nigeria. AZ Nwokedi is a stakeholder in the transport subsector of Nigeria's economy, a sector that contributes significantly to the nation's GDP is no doubt critical to growth and development of any society. More critical is the service Nwokedi offers. Alimilon goes to Alimilon. You know, when alloy bends, it used to vibrate when, I'm, when it's in the car. Yeah. So when you come here, we need to test it. Test it, test it, okay. It will be okay. Smithing is a skill Wokidi acquired at Apapa in Lagos. It took him three years, six months to hone his skills. And upon graduation, he relocated to the seat of power, Abuja, where he eggs a living at Apo Mechanic Village. In a day, at times, we do like 10, 15 rooms a day. Depends. Then came COVID-19. COVID-19, we suffered. We, that COVID-19, nobody even used to come out to repair his rooms. He says while he's yet to recover, the news of another possible restriction due to the Delta variant of the virus is threatening. And at a time, he is building capacity to expand his business. For the machine now, the last time I asked about it, the machine is about uh, 10 point something million uh, for the machine. We use, we use it to, I mean, even if the rim is pieces, we use it to remove another one, as in bring the condemned one. 
melt it together and remove it exactly. With four people presently in his employment, having graduated six, he hopes to empower more youth in this line of business. Surviving COVID-19 series is brought to you in partnership with the Central Bank of Nigeria. Regulation of economic policies have been identified as one of the major ways to cap incessant hike in prices of essential commodities, such as the cooking gas. Wisdom Jacob, who visited some gas outlets within the metropolis, discovered that the hike in the price of gas is artificial due to the scarcity of the products. Over 900,000 people are negatively impacted annually from the use of kerosene, firewood, and charcoal for cooking across the country. Apart from the federal government's advocacy on the need for people to use gas for cooking, many Nigerians had already adopted the use of gas for domestic purposes. But recently, the price of cooking gas has been on the increase and it has affected low-income earners and the common man in the society. Generally, there's hyperinflation in this country. So it, 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 it has a spiral effect. Um, I was surprised when I came here and I was told gas is 580 from a regular 450 I, I used to buy. What do I do? I need to cook for my children. We are still using the same salary. That, that we got some three, four, five years ago, and that's the same salary as we're using today. And the price of things are increasing. The kerosene, the price of oil, price of oil, the price of gas. So it's not surprising in Nigeria. We just have to manage and cope with the way we are saying everything today. And let the people who matter in government know that there's this nagging problem for the masses in case there's something they can think of. Gas vendors on their part attribute increase in the price of the community to decrease in supply of the product. That is a, the main problem. And when you know there is no gas, you know, the ones we have, the little ones we have, we want to, you know, at least keep the price up a little bit. So it keeps inflating every day, every day. Today you might go now, before you know they've added another price. Like initially, we were selling as a 520, but now you've seen the price list there, it's 586. Other people are even selling to Sunday now, so. But at least since people are complete, we just have to reduce it to 584 now, just so. So it's now our fault. With the incessant hike in the price of the product, the federal government's vision of having 90% users of gas as cooking fuel may seem to be impossible. In Uyo, Wisdom Jacob. From cooking gas to crude oil, where prices fell for a sixth day on Thursday, the longest losing streak since February 2020, as a spike in COVID-19 cases worldwide fueled fears over slower fuel demand. Brent crude was down 1.3% at $67.36 a barrel, after touching the lowest since May 24th at $67.10 earlier on Wednesday. U.S. West Texas Intermediate fell $1.00. Five cent to sixty-four dollars forty-one cents a barrel, after falling to as low as sixty-four dollars twenty-four cents, also the lowest since May. And still talking commodities, analysts say India could export six million tons of sugar in the new season, starting in October, with global prices making overseas sales more lucrative after rising to their highest in four and a half years. A look at the commodity prices.
Now, a look at the global stock market with Bosede Ebo. Investors are following the latest geopolitical event following the U.S. decision to withdraw its troops from Afghanistan. This has, however, affected global stocks coupled with the increasing numbers of Delta variant COVID-19. In Africa, South Africa's GSE Africa Top 40 and Namibia's overall index resumed trade on a negative note as other stocks are predicted to follow the same trend. European markets are poised to open lower on Thursday as investors digest the latest Federal Reserve minutes. The UK's FTSE 100 is seen down by 1.75%. The French CAC 40 is opened down by 2.31% basis point and Germany's DAX 30 started the session lower by 1.1 percent. Shares in Asia Pacific fell in Thursday trade with Chinese tech stock slipping against a regulatory fears continue to weigh on investor sentiment. The Hang Seng Index slipped 2.5 percent, Shanghai Composite 0.57 percent, and Nikkei in Japan also declined 1.1 percent to close at 27,281.17. Stock futures in the United States were lower in early morning trading on Thursday after Wall Street suffered a sell-off as meeting minutes showed the Federal Reserve started eyeing tapering before the year end. Futures on the Dow Jones Industrial Average dropped 170 points. S&P 500 futures and Nasdaq 100 futures were both in negative territory. Boss said the able business express. With that update, we'll wrap this edition of Business Express. Remember to keep in touch with us by sending us comments, observations, and suggestions. Also be informed that all previous episodes are available on YouTube on the NTA's channel. Business Express returns Friday at 3 p.m. Be safe out there.